These aviation arrows came about for the need for being able to fly aircraft at night. And back in the 1920s, aircraft were still relatively new, but pilots could only fly during the daytime hours where they could navigate by looking at the geography and landmarks, common landmarks that they could see. So at nighttime, they had to come in for a landing and put the planes away. Well, the U.S. Postal Service wanted to have overnight mail and have faster mail service, and they came up with this novel idea of being able to fly at night by pouring these concrete arrows on the ground every 10 miles. They ranged in size anywhere from 50 to 70 feet long. They were painted bright yellow. They had a tower with a 1 million candle power light above them that shone around as a flashing beacon. And they illuminated the arrow so that the arrow could be seen from as far away as 10 miles when you're up in the air. So starting in Ohio, they poured these arrows on the ground going westward toward Rock Springs, Wyoming, every 10 miles. And then from there, they wanted a complete long transcontinental route for air mail. And so they extended the route from Ohio to New York and all the way west to San Francisco. And then at Salt Lake City, right out just west of Salt Lake, they created a spur route that went from Salt Lake City all the way south through St. George, all the way to Los Angeles. And it, the, the route was completed in about 1924. And once we had that, it enabled pilots to stay up in the air all night long because they could see these arrows and fly safely as long as they followed the arrows to their next destination. What made this so unique is that before that time, it took three weeks to get a letter from New York City to Los Angeles. And once these arrows were completed with overnight flights, it now took only 30 hours to get a letter from New York to Los Angeles with overnight flight mail. There are three that we know of that, are, that remain in the Washington County area. There's uh, one by Bloomington, one uh, just east of St. George, and one in, in Washington proper, just at the north end of it. And those three remain, they're about 10 miles apart from each other. And then we have some in Northern Utah. We have these two here on Interstate 80, actually three along Interstate 80 heading west from Salt Lake City that are still in existence. We know of one in Woods Cross and one up by Locomotive Springs in Northern Utah. And there's rumors of other ones around the state. Many of them were destroyed during the World War II effort. In World War II, the towers were taken down because the metal was needed for the war effort. And there were some concerns about foreign enemies being able to use those arrows to navigate through our country. And so some of the concrete arrows were torn up. So we are fortunate to have at least uh, seven of those areas still remaining in the state, at least, at least seven of them still remaining in the state of Utah as a part of our aviation history. They were only in use until about 1933 when radar and low frequency radio was then used for aircraft. And that made the need for these towers and these arrows obsolete after that. So they weren't in use for a very long time, but they served a critical purpose until radar and radio communications were developed for aircraft.